Hello, Richard. Hello. It's very nice to have you here with us at the Data 2020 Summit here in Stockholm. Thank you. Um, before we dive uh, into other questions, can you tell us a bit more about your background in the company that you're representing today? Sure. I'm with IBM. I am our global GDPR governance evangelist. So one of my day jobs mm -hmm. is to focus on uh, the offerings that we have to help clients end-to-end -end mm -hmm. through their GDPR journey. So all the steps mm -hmm. they will go through, both technical and non-technical. The bigger challenge of GDPR is around organizational change management, mm -hmm. people policy process improvements. Technology is important, we mm -hmm. have technology, mm -hmm. but it's really just an enablement layer. Mm -hmm. And there's the bigger change management challenges. Uh, my other day job is part of the internal IBM team for IBM's own Get Ready for GDPR program. Mm -hmm. As IBM is one of the largest uh, data processors and controllers in the world. IBM needs to be GDPR ready and we need to share that commitment to our clients as well and that commitment statement is on our website too, ibm.com slash GDPR. Uh, and I've been involved in the information governance arena for the last 15 years working with clients in every industry, every geography in my global role and the last three years focused on clients who have started their GDPR journey a couple of years ago. Okay, so uh, we will get back to GDPR again, but first um, uh, let me ask you this. We are here today to discuss about how organizations can actually prepare for the world-famous data-driven future, right? Yes. Um, so from your perspective, how can these organizations speed up this process in, in, in becoming really data-driven yep. in, in, in a successful way? So simplistically, to uh, focus and know what your data is and how and where you use it. Mm -hmm. uh, so many organizations today collect a lot of data, probably over-collecting. Uh, we've had a mm -hmm. habit of keeping everything forever because disk is cheap, mm -hmm. allegedly. Uh, but more and more regulations mandate not just a retention period, so you need to stop keeping everything forever, but really put a uh, more of a risk and a financial burden or a penalty on organizations if you are over-keeping information. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's an element of GDPR around the right to erasure. If we no longer have a business relationship, you can no longer keep my information. If we do have a business relationship and I trust you, and building on digital trust with customers, with clients, is a key piece of getting to this uh, data nirvana in future so that information is more trusted, it's of more value, and then we can start to do more uh, things with it, such as more analytics and mm -hmm. uh, analyze and offer more personalized uh, services mm -hmm. and abilities to you more proactively as opposed to reactive today uh, over wide uh, selections. If we can get to trusted data, you have more trust in what you give to us. Yes. You trust mm -hmm. we're doing the right thing with it. You may give even more trusted mm -hmm. information to us and we can ever more tailor and personalize uh, our offerings to you. Exactly. So, um, but, okay, in, in this world of digitalization yes. and technology rapidly changing every day and mm -hmm. new privacy policies, not mentions how GDPR. Yep. Uh, so don't you think these are forcing organizations to, let's say, reevaluate their information management strategy? Yes, overall. So, uh, trying to, to, to create a more holistic approach to data management. Yes. So how well do you see these organizations organizing this kind of main management when it comes to data and are they really making it modern and ready for the future? Uh, not well enough yet. I think uh -huh. we're all on that journey. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and there are large uh, internet-based um, uh, service providers who are more ahead of the curve mm -hmm. in terms of collecting and using data uh, proactively in this digital market space for clients. Mm -hmm. um, Clients are on a, a journey. The key thing to start with is getting a handle on what information is in the business and qualifying and validating that information. Getting to uh, quality information through a master data management program is often a step. Uh, so we know exactly what information we have and we can trust that information for more mm -hmm. internally. Mm -hmm. Having a central catalog or inventory of information so we know if you're a data scientist mm -hmm. or trying to develop a new line of business, mm -hmm. What are the sales in a particular country in this line of business or for this product? How is that going? And what if we did this, this, and this? What are other market aspects uh, that could lead us to expand, extend, or have a whole new line of business opportunity? We can only do that if we trust the data, we know where it is. Yes, yes, fair enough. So, um, 
back back to GDPR. Okay, um, what from your point of view is it a challenge? Is it an opportunity, or is it both? It is both. <laughs> Uh, it is just another regulation, simplistically, that applies to businesses and almost every business, even if they operate in just one country, are going to have more than one regulation that applies. Mm -hmm. Why does GDPR have our focus? Because of the big financial penalties. Mm -hmm. uh, the risk of up to 20 million euros or 4% of your global turnover mm -hmm. definitely focuses the sea level and the board level of organizations. Uh, there's been other privacy regulations. Europe has had them across for uh, 20 years. Um, but they haven't had that teeth and penalty risk that focuses in mind. So GDPR is a challenge for organizations to uh, get a handle on simplistically knowing what personal data is in the business, where it is, mm -hmm. its lineage, where does it come from, what do we do with it, where does it go to, and especially on that processing or processing, what are the legal forms of processing we do in that information. And if we're doing anything on special categories of information, like your health or DNA information, or your voting or political interest, if we're doing any automate, automated profiling, or analytics, or if we're sharing or reselling your information, we have to get explicit purposeful consent from you as a data subject to mm -hmm. use the GDPR language mm -hmm. as a person. Mm -hmm. You need to know this information you're giving us, what are we actually going to do with it explicitly by different processing type, and do you agree or not? And you, from May next year, you'll be able to go in and see, change, or revoke that consent that you've given at any point. So, for example, if you're signing up to a bank, you give them the general information on your income yeah. and where you live, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. and that's all part of the normal processing that that bank would do as part of their normal business. Mm -hmm. If they're taking that information and reselling you vacation or holiday packages, that's probably going to be a surprise and is not something you would consent to. Okay. Um, so that's that's an example of that, that there. Mm, so organizations need to get on top of knowing what personal data in the business, its history, its lineage, and get to handle the special cases and processing exceptions they have. Mm -hmm. And to be ready by next year to respond to regulators and have that record of processing ready as a minimal bar. They have to at least have that. Mm -hmm. And then how are they going to respond to the data subject access requests that uh, from May anyone can file mm -hmm. your right to inquire? What information do you have on me? Mm -hmm. or right to a raise. We no longer have a business relationship. I'm an insurer. You insured your car. Mm -hmm. The policy ended a month ago. You can submit a right to a raise request. I have a month to erase all the information I have on you. Cannot keep it anymore. Unless there's other regulatory or legal reasons to keep it. And I have to explain that to you as well. Pretty complex. <laughs> it's, it's simple in terms of it's focused on personal data and the obligations to mm -hmm. on the company to be a uh, respond to regulators and the data subject requests, but the complexity and the risk and challenge is most organizations have disparate information commingled in multiple systems. You know, your information is in 15 different systems and places around the world. Finding that and pulling it together in 30 days is a challenge. Exactly. So looking at GDPR technology or practice, again from your area of expertise, um, what can we expect, let's say, in the next 12 months. <laughs> so uh, we really have 250 days, not 12 yes, months. Yes. That's when the regulation goes live, but then it really will become interesting as regulators start to act and we'll see and observe who do they first go after and potentially uh, mm. penalize with fines, what will be their interpretations in the real world of the regulation and how will they expect organizations to comply. That will evolve over time. Mm -hmm. um, we can uh, expect we'll need uh, solutions that help accelerate a client's journey uh, around the, the actions they need to do for GDPR. Mm -hmm. I call them actionable GDPR outcomes. So you need a rapid ability and again machine learning mm -hmm. and uh, automated intelligence or mm -hmm. cognitive abilities mm -hmm. can help the accelerators at every one of these stages. So help me find what's personal doing in my business. I'm not going to sit there and Google mm -hmm. search internally and find all that stuff. Help me define what is personal data in Europe and help me go find that quickly with technology, not with people, because we don't have the time. Yes. And then help me automate the response back to clients through a subject access request portal, for example. Well, uh, Richard, it was a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you again for your input in the summit and for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you so Good much. Good luck.